Warning. The stunts displayed further are performed by reenactors trained in blunt steel blade combat. Every move has been trained off camera to ensure every hit landed on a safe area of the armor. We advise you not to try similar actions unless you have a foam sword. Hello again. You're probably wondering what we're doing back here. Well, last time we talked about the Centurion, we only spoke about the gear. We never said anything about the more interesting part. We're gonna talk about the moveset today. Before we do though, let me explain our goal here. Now we don't want to make the Centurion's moveset completely usable in a real life fight. Why would you ask? Well, because it just wouldn't work, no matter how hard we tried. If you're interested in ancient combat, you may have noticed a big problem with our Roman boy's setup here. That's right, he has no shield. And why is that a problem, you may ask? You see, the Gladius on its own is a very low potential weapon. An enlarged dagger, really. If you try to fight only with a gladius against an enemy with pretty much any kind of a longer weapon, the only sane option is to try to escape. Just by looking at the weapon configurations on all the characters, Centurion is one of the weakest, definitely. He just has no real life chance of even attempting a fight some of the opponents. We just made a few small adjustments here and there in the skill set so the combos make at least a bit more sense. Plus, it was a lot of fun trying to recreate some of these combos in the reenactment gear. Oh boy, there's a lot to unpack here. Let's start with the stance, shall we? Generally speaking, both the side and high guard are good. Even though the latter may not look like it, this blade position allows a wide variety of attacks, while your enemy is left guessing where the next advance will come from. The thing we have to point out here is the shifting between the side stances. Just throwing a sword from one hand to another is a really bad idea. You could miss and hit yourself. The weapon may fall on the floor, leaving you defenseless. There are just a lot of ways to let your enemy slit your throat by doing that. Instead, just pass the sword from hand to hand. It's outside of the camera's view, so it doesn't affect theatricality. It may just be an animation thing to make the switch faster, but we have evidence that may say otherwise. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get into slashing. The first few combinations consist of light and heavy attacks that can be divided like so. Three phases for the light attacks, depending on the order of the combo, and two phases for the heavies, which further split into charged and non-charged. Starting with light attacks. The first and second phase are roughly the same move with some minor changes, as the first is a starting action and the second phase is a following one, meaning it comes after a different attack. Nothing much to say here, honestly. We are not questioning the big, marked and obvious way of movement, since it looks graphically more interesting, hence it's better for video games. Phase 3 though... Let's just start with the side variant. After two attacks, Centurion decides to... spin. Now, we know game developers love spins. We do too. This one, however... It just feels unnecessary. We think that just winding this sword around your head would make a similarly good looking attack while eliminating the whole time you'd be exposing your back to the enemy. The top one isn't as bad. The only problem is that the Centurion bends his entire body forward too much. Our suggestion would be to keep the slash appear more powerful by extending the swinging distance and reducing body tilt to keep yourself more upright. Okay, time for heavy attacks. The non-charged versions of Phase 1 are just as Roman as you can get with sword fighting, so there's no problems with them. 
They're just generic stabs from top and side. Actually, if you gave the Centurion a shield, it would almost look like just a very correct way the legionaries are supposed to fight. Well, what do you know? The charged versions, though... The blade path is not bad, but there are two major issues. First off, Centurion jumps as he attacks. Jumping in combat situations is a very... specific tactic. For a short moment, your enemy can clearly see the path your body will take. No need to say, this is far from ideal, but it's not the biggest problem. Charging for an attack. We just have no idea how to justify or correct this. Anything that we came up with looked too similar to the non-charged version or simply didn't work. Maybe it's just the best way to perform this move. Let's progress to phase. Oh now don't get me wrong, these animations look badass, but as much as they do, there's so many things wrong here. Let's start with the non-charged side variant. The Centurion grabs the Gladius in two hands while turning away from the enemy for a more powerful thrust. Alright. This move honestly looks awesome. Real fight wise, maybe just turn a bit less to not open yourself as much. Next up is the non-charged top. Reversing the grip mid fights just hurts to think about. The problem is that the gladius is usually top heavy, so turning it around in your hand is risky, not to mention that it's really hard to pull off attacks. There's there's no redeeming it, just throw in a normal top thrust, PLEASE! Charged side is basically emphasizing what we wanted to reduce with the short time. While sliding to the left, the back opening is huge and it makes it impossible to defend yourself. The wind up doesn't add all that much force to begin with with that hand position. We know it's just a mechanic, but still, nothing we can do, we'll just let it be. For the charged top, here's what happens if you try it in a real fight. Once again we see the reverse grip, and this time there's a huge opening as the Centurion's winding up for the stab. Actually, to us, it looks more like a finisher than a combo. With this one, we'd also have to change a lot to make it usable. The best thing we could come up with was just to do it faster. It looks cool, but once again, just some slight changes wouldn't make it work. Alright, now we're getting into the combos that actually have names, so... Let's start with Eagle's Fury, shall we? Eagle's Fury is... a move. It certainly is. Alright, alright, let's try to do something here. First off, the jump. I've already said what problems a jump in a fight may bring. It's also the main trope of the move, so it wouldn't feel right to try and reduce or remove it. What you could do is don't reverse the grip. It makes no sense. The Centurion is handicapping himself while in a handicapped position. Regular topside frosts look cool enough. It's the least we could do to make it a bit less unreal. Okay, next up, Legatus Ardor. Legatus Ardor is generally a good move. Dodging to the side, followed by a swift jab to the abdomen, is a very nice move, especially against slower opponents. There's nothing wrong with this, really. Now, it would be tricky to pull off against an opponent with a shield. Still, very good move. A skilled fighter would be definitely able to pull this off in a real duel. Okay, next up, Legion Kick. The Legion Kick, as the name suggests, is a kick. Kicks work in combat. They're risky and suddenly can be utilized as often as they are in full honor. Generally though, kicking someone to push them off balance is a very nice way to throw in a hit. Funny enough, that's exactly what you get here. After landing the kick, 
you get a free light attack on the enemy. Then again, you need to worry about the opponent cutting your leg. Realistically, it's alright, just a bit more situational than you'd see in the game. And now it's time to take a look at probably the most iconic move of the Centurion. Mainly speaking, the jab. Stop the enemy! That is good defense! That is what I expect! Let's be done here! Kill them! And we can be drunk by sundown! At last we have arrived! Possibly the most iconic out of all of the Centurion's combos. The jab is... a punch. It's a punch. Punching works. As long as we look at the non-charged variants, there's nothing wrong. Keep in mind that Centurion's hands are covered in armor. Punching armor barehanded would be very dumb. If you disagree, try punching a pan. And then again we come to the point of the charged variants. We know... Charging is an integral mechanic to the Centurion's moveset, but once again, leaves you open, doesn't provide all that much more power, can't really do anything about that. This windup also guarantees the enemy falling on the back. Whenever an opponent is thrown to the ground, the Centurion can leap to stab them right into the chest. This one's tricky. Technically, you could finish someone off like that. The reverse grip isn't even that big of an issue this time. The jump, again, gives your enemy tons of time to recollect himself and roll to the side or point his weapon at you as you try to fly towards them. Though so again, it's very much a finishing style move. It's supposed to be used on fallen enemies that are most likely concussed or at least confused. We'll let it slide as passable, but uncomfortably flashy. Okay, now that that's over, Guard breaking. It wouldn't work. All it takes for things to go bad is a simple step back and a cut in any direction from the enemy. Let's pretend it works. You have two options. You can either hit them with your hilt up to three times or shove them around like you own the souls. Those moves don't look half bad. But we just have one question. Since you managed to get this close and have some time to hit the opponent around, why not just stab them to death? And lastly, we arrive at the parrying. Deflecting light attacks looks alright, but parrying by supporting your sword on your forearm? Yeah, have fun straightening that. Swords generally don't like taking hits on the flat. That isn't even the worst thing. You see, Centurion may be taking those hits like a champ, but when the blades bash, you're sure to get some friction. Even with bracelets, you risk the blade slipping onto your skin and then into your skin. Sticking to the basic deflects and emphasizing the movements a bit to make them look stronger is probably the way to go. The parry counter looks plausible on the first look. However, we've come to a painful realization that smashing your patella against a helmet is not the optimal way to fight. In full leg armor, maybe. Not with just greaves. They won't be of much help. Trust me. Alright, that was fun. Honestly, I thought it would be a lot worse. Hope we didn't come off as too critical of the game. Because at the end of the day, it's not real life, nor does it claim to have historically accurate fighting. We hope you enjoyed it, and keep an eye out for our next videos. Roma Caput Mundi